welcome to my lie detector circuit. Here's the circuit here, it's effectively a comparator and then we've got an amplifier there and we've got in here which I'll show in a bit is a, an LDR with a super bright white LED shining on top of that and when I put my finger, when I insert my finger in between them it's sensitive enough so the light shines through my finger and picks up as I get blood going through my finger from when my heart beats it makes a little change in voltage across the LDR which is picked up by the comparator and I'm going to try and do that now hopefully it'll work so we switch it on it usually takes a bit of time to settle down you've got to be relaxed we can see on the oscilloscope here there's my pulse going up and down and I'll try and move this so you can see the output of the comparator so there's the output of the comparator and we could use that, we could use the frequency counter to measure that I'll switch it off now because it's bloody annoying and this is just I've rigged this up in in about five minutes with a with the LED as you can see there and we've got the LDR and that comes away and I'll plug that into the breadboard and uh, I'll show you how the circuits all made and, and put together um, after this and that as I say is that Hi there, so here we've got the circuit, this is the pulse detector circuit. It's built in multi-sim, you can simulate it if you want, this one actually doesn't work in multi-sim, although the, the real circuit itself does work, which shows some of the limitations of early simulation software. Just a few points of interest, the function generator here replicates the pulse, I've got it set at about 30 millivolts, that was the pulse that I was getting from my detector, about 30 millivolt peak. In reality you would use a variable resistor to set the gain to the kind of gain that you want and you're going to need to use a 4.7 microfarad or something similar type capacitor to ground the inverting input through this resistor here. If you don't do that the amplifier will amplify any DC that it picks up from your, uh, from your signal and effectively your signal will be swamped in DC so this is a, a vital component it must be there the signal then goes to the comparator the comparator module here the you could invert you could change swap about pins two and three experiment with that if you wanted to it doesn't really make an awful lot of difference it just inverts the output we've got the power supply decoupling capacitors here they must be in the circuit as well otherwise you're going to get an awful lot of problems with your with uh, with power supply noise especially with this comparator is very very sensitive to power supply noise we have a visual indication here and the load resistor here and finally the output stage so you can hear the beep we send it to uh, an op amp follower a buffer and the buffer feeds the buzzer and in my version here I've got a, a diode so I've got a diode looking at um, to protect against inductive spikes back to the follower. This is a uh, this is the what effectively what the detector is. We've got a light dependent resistor one side. We've got a super bright white LED the other side. Both the LDR and the super bright LED should really have a variable resistor so that you can tune it to to exactly how you need it to be. Only stipulation would be that I would say somewhere around about 20k for this variable resistor for the LDR and somewhat less maybe about uh, 470 ohms or less 220 even for the super bright LED. In my circuit I'm feeding that through a 100 ohm resistor so you can go quite low and, and it can get very bright. This is a, a breadboard build 
which I which I've just done. I'm not going to go through how to use the software. It is extremely easy. You just click it. For example, here's a an eight pin chip, and you can change various things that you want to do in that. Same for the wires. It's just something to fiddle around with. It won't take you very long to get the hang of it. Change all the spans, so on and so forth. This the the one, the one problem with this software. It's free, but you can't do any bends with the wires. So this breadboard build here is is a lot more convoluted actually than it needs to be. But to show it laid out properly, so it's easy to follow, I've, I've done it in this way. For the buzzer, because there's no buzzer on this side for the buzzer I've used an LDR symbol but that would be for the buzzer there and just to keep things simple I haven't put the diode across it but other than that everything else um, is there your signal input from the pulse checker which will need to be built separately you will see on my one I've got I've used a cardboard tube for it that's where your signal is going to come in there to the LM358 so you would need to connect that up separately but this is essentially the circuit that you see. Bye-bye.